Hi boys and girls, it's Miss Alyssa, and I am so excited to be doing art again today. A lot has changed since the last time we were together. We're in a new month, which is January, and we're even in a new year, which is 2021. But you know what has not changed since the last time we did art? The season. In December, we talked about being in the season of winter. Well, it's still winter. It's so cold outside, but that's not always a bad thing because do you know what the season of winter brings? Snow. Have you been to the snow this year? We went just a little while ago and it was so cold, but it was so much fun. We're going to be doing a snowflake project today. And I thought we could start with a poem. Your teacher might have given you the snowflake poem that you can color at home, but if not, that's okay. We'll still share it together. You ready? Snowflakes, snowflakes falling everywhere. They land on my nose and they land in my hair. When they fall upon my hand, I look carefully. Each one is unique, just like you and me. Snowflakes are unique. Did you know that? Yeah, that's right. Just like people, every snowflake is different and beautiful. Just like we are all different and beautiful in our own way. Okay, so today we're going to be using our watercolor paints to create the background for our snowflake picture. And I want to talk about something new. Last time we talked about a horizon line and we've talked about other vocabulary words for art. And today our new art word is texture. Can you say that? Texture. Texture is how something looks. We're using a couple of our senses, how something looks or how something feels. Okay, I want you to feel your shirt. You're gonna feel the texture. Can you tell somebody near you what your shirt feels like? Mine is kind of a funny fabric. So my shirt feels bumpy. That's what the texture is like. Now, if I feel my pants, my pants feel really smooth. The texture of my shirt and my pants is different. Well, in art, if we use different tools, we can make the texture of our paint look different. So I have a little example for you. You ready? I made this board and these four spots here are the same purple paint, but the texture on each one is different. I used a brush to make this texture. It's, it sort of has lines and it's nice and smooth. I used a sponge to dab this texture here. Then I used a fork and I dragged it across the paint to create another texture. And on this one, I used an eraser and I dabbed it on to give the paint another texture. So even though this is the same paint four times, it all has different textures. So we're gonna be using your watercolors and you didn't even know it, but you have already created different textures in our lessons. Do you remember when we did our fall tree? and we used the cotton ball and we dabbed the paint with our pincher fingers and we created this fun texture. And then the, after we did our turkeys, we did our winter tree and we threw the salt on our watercolors and it absorbed the paint and it created this wintry texture that looked like snowflakes. Isn't that neat? Okay, well today we're gonna be using saran wrap. Do you know what that is? It's that plastic wrap that your parents may put over food to keep it really fresh. We're gonna be using saran wrap on our watercolor today to make a new texture. Isn't that cool? All right, are you ready to make some new textures with our cool colors again? Do we remember what those cool colors are? Blue, purple, and green. We're gonna use those cool colors to create a new texture today. Are you ready? All right, come on, let's go. Okay, boys and girls, are you ready to make an awesome new texture with our cool wintry colors? 
Great! For this lesson, you will need your half sheet of watercolor paper, which I've put on top of a paper towel just to keep the mess off of my table. You will need some scissors, a black Sharpie, your watercolor paints with some water, You'll need glue. You can choose either bottled glue or a glue stick. I prefer bottled glue, but if all you have is a glue stick today, that's okay. And you'll need your two doilies, paper doilies. And if you don't know what a doily is for, these are actually for food. They're to make your food kind of fancy. So if you were doing like a fancy party, you could put your cupcakes or your cookies on top of them and make them look super fancy. But today, that's what we're going to use for our snowflakes. And last but not least, you will need saran wrap. That's that plastic wrap that we talked about that you might see mom and dad using in the kitchen to keep your food fresh. Now, saran wrap can be a little bit dangerous when you tear it. So if you have mom or dad or grandma and grandpa or daycare, whoever is around you to help you with saran wrap today, that would be a really great idea. Okay, we're gonna get started without our saran wrap so we can put that to the side. We also don't need our glue right now, so I'm gonna put that to the side. We don't need our doilies right now. We don't need our scissors right now. But we are going to start with our Sharpie. And the first thing you're going to do is write your name down at the bottom. I'm going to scoop my water out of the way for just a second here. So let's start with your name. Here we go. Miss Alyssa. And when you're all done with that, and if you don't have a Sharpie and you have a crayon today, that works too. All right, so once you have your name, we're gonna get ready to use those paints. Okay, so I'm gonna set my water over here, and I'm gonna get my paints out. And remember, today we are using our cool colors. What were they again? Blue, green, and purple. So am I going to use my yellow today? No. What about orange and red? No, those were our warm colors. We're going to use our cool colors today. Our blue, green, and purple. All right, we're gonna get started by swirling in our water. And if you remember when we did our tree project, I wanted you to get your paintbrush nice and wet. Well, today I want you to do the same thing. So I'm gonna start with blue. You can start with whatever cool color you want, but I'm starting with blue. And I want you to get it nice and wet. And then you're just gonna kinda of paint some blobs. And then I'm gonna get it nice and wet again. Swirl it in my blue. And we're just gonna paint some blobs on our page here. They don't have to be any certain shape. They can be different sizes. All that really matters is that you have lots of water. Because if you only paint like this, boop, and it's not very wet, our project won't work quite well. So you need to get it nice and wet. Okay, some blue blobs. Okay, I'm gonna switch my cool color. Now I'm gonna add some green, nice and wet, dabbing it in the water. Do some green blobs, more water. Getting that green nice and wet. Maybe I'll do a blob over here. It's okay if your green and your blue mix. More water, more green. It's okay if it comes off the side a little bit. We're just painting some swirly blobs. Using those pincher fingers to hold our paintbrush that we're getting nice and wet. Do you notice that every time I go to get more paint, I swirl it in the water? Okay, I think I'm gonna switch to my last cool color, which is purple, that's right. Okay, I'm getting lots of water. I'm gonna swirl in my purple down here. Move it up, get it nice and wet. And now I'm gonna do some purple blobs. And like I said, it's okay if your colors touch, more water. All that matters is that they're nice, wet blobs. And I'm gonna try and fill up most of my page here. Okay, I'm gonna, maybe I'll add some purple in here. More water. Swirling, using those pincher fingers, I'm adding some more purple. 
So you're just going to use those cool colors to fill up the whole page. And if you want to go back to blue and add more blue, if you notice that one of your colors is getting really dry, like my blue looks kind of dry right there, I'm going to swirl some more blue paint on there because you really want your colors to be wet. That's how we're gonna get that awesome texture. Okay, I think I might add one more purple blob. So if your paper is like mine, getting more water, and you have a bunch of nice, wet, cool color blobs, we're going to move to the next step. If you're not ready, you can pause the video. But if you are ready, you can put your paint away. So I'm gonna put my brush back in, which I'll rinse in the sink when I'm done. I'm gonna move my water out of the way. And I'm gonna move this right in the center here. So if you're ready with your cool colors, I want you to get that saran wrap. Now, you might, you are going to need an adult's help here because saran wrap has really sharp edges where it cuts. And you're gonna need a nice big piece of saran wrap. So if you can ask an adult to help you, we're gonna take that plastic wrap and we're just gonna lay it on top of our cool colors. Bloop, like that. Now, once it's on there, I want you to kind of like pinch it around. Use those pincher fingers. You're gonna kind of crinkle it. If you need another piece because you have you didn't totally cover your picture, you can do that. Ask an adult to help you get another piece of saran wrap and just boop, put it on top. There's no wrong way to do this. Just as long as it covers your paint. Pinch it around a little. And it kind of looks like a mess, doesn't it? Well, that saran wrap is going to give us our awesome texture. Okay, if you are finished with your saran wrap, you are going to put your paper aside to dry. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one aside. And if you need to pause the video to go put yours somewhere to dry, now is a great time to do that. Okay, if you are back and you have put your painting aside, now we're going to move on to making our snowflakes. Remember those paper doilies that I talked about? The little paper that makes cupcakes and parties really fun? This is what we're going to make our unique snowflakes out of. Okay, you ready? We're going to start with one. And what I want you to do is fold it in half. Can you try and find the middle? If so, we're gonna pinch, 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 all the way across. So now it looks like, oops, it looks like a taco. Okay, if you have your taco ready, we're gonna take one side and we're gonna meet the other side. Say hello. We're gonna fold it over to the other side and we're gonna pinch, 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 pinch. So you had a taco. And now you look like you have a piece of pie or a piece of pizza. And we're gonna pinch, 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 pinch. Okay, when you're ready with that piece of pie, I want you to grab your scissors. Ready? Okay, now here's where our shapes come in. I want you to find the point here on your piece of pie, okay? Maybe use your pincher fingers to hold the other side. We're going to cut a triangle, just two sides of the triangle one side all the way through the whole doily and the other side boop so that we have a hole there that sort of looks like a triangle that's missing one side now here's the thing about snowflakes remember we said that all snowflakes are unique so if your snowflake doesn't look exactly like my snowflake that's okay because no matter how you cut it it's gonna come out looking so cool Okay, if you've cut off the point, I want you to turn it in your pincher fingers, and we're gonna cut another two sides of a triangle on this side. One, two, boop, and it should fall out just like that. Then we're gonna go to the other side, and we're gonna cut 
two sides of a triangle out. One, two, boop, and it should come out. Now you can add one to this side. One, two, boop. You could add one here. Just make sure that you don't cut all the way across. Now this might be kind of hard, and if you make a mistake, I did give you an extra doily in case you make a mistake and you need to try again. But even if you do, that's okay. It will still work. So I'm done cutting my triangles. So now all you have to do is open it up and voila, oh, I got an extra one. There's your first snowflake. Isn't that awesome? Look how beautiful and unique it is. All right, we're gonna do it again. So if you're ready, join me. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have the bottom meet the top, say hello. We're gonna use our pincher fingers to make that taco. Now we're gonna bring this side to this side to say hello. And now we're making our piece of pie. Okay now, but this time, since you're a pro, a professional at folding our doilies, we're going to fold it one more time. So we're gonna have this side meet this side now. Hello! And use those pinch your fingers to pinch down again. Okay, now we're gonna do kind of the same thing. I'm gonna have you put your pinch your fingers at the top and we're gonna cut those two sides of the triangle. One, two, and we're gonna cut off that point. And it should fall down just like that. Then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna cut those two sides of the triangle on this side. One, two, and it should fall down or you can pull it down just like that. Then we're gonna go to the other side. One, two, two sides of that triangle, okay? If you wanna try and add one more little one here, you can. If not, that's okay too, because all snowflakes are what? Unique. Okay, when you've cut out your two sides of your triangle, we're gonna open this one up. Ready? Oh my goodness. Look at that beautiful snowflake. So now we have two unique snowflakes. See how they're both different, but they're both beautiful, right? Just like us. Okay, I don't need my paper towel and all these little scraps anymore. So I'm gonna fold them up and I'm gonna throw them away. If you made a, sn a third snowflake, you can just keep it. Or if you made a mistake and you need to try again, you have a third snowflake. Okay, so when you're all done cutting out your snowflakes, you need to wait until your painting is dry for the next step, okay? So if your painting is not dry yet, now is a good time to pause and come back when it is. I have one over here that I already did that is already dry. So I'm gonna show you the next step if you're ready. Okay, so if your painting is dry, here's what it will look like with the saran wrap still on top. So the first step is to peel it off. Use those pincher fingers and wow, look at that awesome texture. I see some straight lines. I see, look at all, look at, there's different textures even inside. Some are smooth, some look bumpy. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so your last step is to glue your snowflakes on. So this is where you can use bottled glue or you can use your glue stick. I like bottle glue because I think it's easier. These doilies are very delicate. Delicate means that it can break, or in this case, they can tear really easily. So if you use a glue stick and you use it really hard, it might tear them. So I think it's easier to use bottled glue for this part. And you don't need a lot. If you do too much, you're gonna have a really wet doily. So I'm gonna open my glue. Oops. And I'm just going to do a few dots around my snowflake. Little dots. You don't need to hold it and squeeze it. 
just little dots of glue kind of all over my snowflake. And if you need to put it down to dab little glue dots on it, that's fine. Just some little glue dots all around my snowflake. Then I'm going to turn it over and place it on my watercolor picture and leave it there to dry. Then I'm gonna take my other snowflake and I'm gently going to dab some glue or gently use that glue stick just kind of all over. And I'm gonna flip that one over and ta-da! There we go. We have two beautifully unique snowflakes on our cool watercolors with that awesome new texture. I hope you guys had a lot of fun with our new art project today and I can't wait to see you next month. Bye boys and girls.